how it bursts at you and leaving intentionally because that's what i got from here everything you did is like let's just go with it and live fully and with intention my guest flatline twice came back uh, from from the dead two times not just once and his life is absolutely living full on with intention and the adventure that he gets to bring with this my guest from how did i get here the author andrew fitzgerald andrew welcome to the show how are you i'm doing great maureen thank you so much for uh, asking me to join your platform and sharing your audience with me as well i do appreciate everybody's attention and help so love I'm so glad you're here love 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 the book there was just as you were going to look at the audience tell a little bit about the the flatlining and then at how it bursts at you and leaving intentionally because that's what I got from here everything you did is like let's just go with it and live fully and with intention sure so hi my name is Andrew Fitzgerald I'm a native of County Cork in Ireland and I live in San Diego now for the past 11 years with my wife, Jane, who's also from Cork in Ireland. And we have a three and a half year old boy called Alfie. And back in the late 90s, while after a very vigorous and aggressive game of soccer, my heartbeat was rapidly beating. And after about 10 or 11 hours, it just hadn't self-regulated itself. So we went to the hospital and um, they discovered effectively that I had a genetic heart condition called Wolf Parkinson White, where I had an, an extra electrical pathway in my heart. But the best and only course of action was to medically induce a flat line. And um, the doctor stopped my heart. And thankfully, I was resuscitated and the heart started again. I went on medication and uh, it happened a short period of time again second time about six weeks later while on the golf course which wouldn't be very vigorous exercise Maureen more likely to be having a beer and relaxing and just out enjoying golf so you know at that stage I went to hospital again and again the course of action was to medically induce a flat line and again thankfully for the second time my heart uh, restarted itself again and then I had to have a small procedure basically I had a, the pathway ablated so basically burned off or soldered that was 1998 fast forward to 2023 i have not had any heart issues but when i woke up maureen the first time in um the hospital i asked the nurse how did i get here uh, i was obviously confused and a bit disorientated so hence that's the name of the book how did i get here and the second piece about the book was you know i was so thankful to wake up at 19 years of age and I couldn't imagine what my parents was going through that. I said, I'm going to live my life with no regrets now as best I could. And I didn't know at that time what life would have in store. And anything I've done since has always been with the prism or the idea, will I regret this later in life? And if it's something that's been very big, I've decided to try and do something about it because I'm sure there will be things I regret. But I've tried to live my life with intention. I'm 45 years of age and um, I'm delighted to have written a book, published a book be a best-selling author on Amazon and an internationally best-selling author. And I'm delighted to chat with you. Wonderful, wonderful. So first of all, the, the second time when you flatlines, the nun comes in to hold your hand. What kind, what came up for you? Uh, you know, you're lying on um, what we call in Ireland, a hospital trolley or a gurney in America. And I'm looking at the ceiling and I suppose I'm looking at faces, but you couldn't mistake a nun with the black and white habit on her head. And she was a really nice lady. You know, she had that reassuring smile, but she was holding my hand and she gave me the last rites. And I guess, you know, when you, when you hear the last rites, when you actually hear them, you kind of think, wow, you know, this is very serious right now. Um, but also, I suppose there was some trust. I almost felt that there was people with me on that this little journey, you know, down the corridor, into the elevator, up in the elevator, out into the, you know, ER. And I, you know, it was weird because when I woke up, I was the healthiest person in that intensive care unit. I mean, there was alarms going off, people were passing away and I was there. I actually feel fine, you know. It was just this little thing that I would that I had that would send my heartbeat 
rapidly. But the great thing was that the nurses said to me, my God, Andrew, you have some heart because most hearts would explode. You know what I mean? So like for that nine or 10 hours, the first time my heart was just nonstop. And I thought it was literally, you know, we played a great game of soccer. We were beaten, but, you know, we played brilliantly. And it was like, leave it all on, on, on the field. But, you know, very hard to process after that, Maureen, because I never spoke about it, really. You know, I suppose I don't know if it was being a teenager and not knowing how to express myself or maybe perhaps a little bit culturally Irish. We would be kind of a bit guarded not to speak too openly about things or else it was just, hey, teenager, let's get on with things, you know. So I'm sure people have asked you this. Did you see anything? I, I don't uh, recall if I did. I, you know, again, I woke up, I, I, the last thing I remember seeing was the gas mask coming on my face and me in my own mind saying, I'm going to stay awake here. I'm going to trick the anesthetologist, but sure that gas is always going to knock you out. But and then waking up the next morning and, and, and that was it really. But um, waking up, I was like, oh, my God, this is great. You know, um, and, and you're here. Gonna, yeah. And, and they're going to have no regrets. And so this this is this is a book about adventures. And I love that because the courage to to not only leave your home and, and Ireland is a I mean, let me know if it's still the same because the world is changing so, so, so rapidly, but very family oriented. And, 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 and a lot of that based in religion, based in gathering, based in food, based in knowledge, based in neighborhood and connection, which is a beautiful thing that leaving is not the norm, right? Sure. Yeah. So look, Ireland is and always will be a very sociable, cultural country, um, regardless of any economic circumstances or even, you know, getting through the pandemic, there was great, you know, community spirit to help people and check in on neighbours. And that's what I love about the country. And I grew up there and Ireland will always be home in my heart. But my wife and I, uh, did some traveling, fell in love with SoCal and in particular San Diego. And when we went back, we entered the permanent resident green card lottery, which is America's way of increasing its diversity. If it's not diverse enough already. And they give out 50,000 permanent resident cards every year. But it is a random draw. So we entered and we said, you know, hey, if it comes up, great. We make the move. We wanted to travel. We wanted to make a legal move to Ireland. So that's how you do it. The draw day came. And we didn't get picked. And it was the most crushing thing ever. We absolutely were so disappointed. We went out for some food and drinks that night. And we just couldn't talk to each other from a point of view. Oh, my God, this is this is big. And then fast forward two weeks later, I was down in my dad's house. And he was listening to the radio, having his lunch, like he always does. And uh, he said, and we hadn't told anyone because we didn't want to worry people. And he said, wow, wasn't that big news about the green card lottery? And I, I've never heard my dad speak about it. And I said, what? You know, I kind of, now I tuned into my dad because as, as, as kids, we don't listen to our parents, of course, no matter what age we are. And it turned out that the computer had spat out numbers one to 500,000, sorry, like one to 50,000. And there had to be a redraw. So they, he'd spat out the numbers one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. So we went on and did the redraw and we were picked. So we went to the embassy, we were interviewed, uh, we passed all the background checks and all the different things that you need to do. And then you kind of have six months, use it or lose it. If you want to get to America, get yourself set up. So we went for it and we absolutely loved it. I guess it was an adventure. Our intention was to go travel, set up a new life. And we landed in San Diego and we kind of set about it as best we could. Yes, you could. You're in Point Loma. You got a three and a half. Your life is great. You're an international bestseller. Oh, I'd say you crushed it. So and more to come. Love, 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 love all of that. So okay, people that that are not accustomed to embracing change and also the as you're on your journey continually to embrace change even then there was setbacks not setbacks but that you went back home and then you still said you know what let's try it again what encouragement would you give to to people listening saying if you want to go for it go for it and what would that look like i think anybody wanted to make any change in their life it can be something small or something huge but to that person it is important to them. So if your gut feeling is telling you you need to follow a certain path or a dream, 
You need to lean into it and you need to wrap your arms around it 100%. Go from a place of what's the worst that can happen and work back because what's the worst that can happen is never the worst. If you change job because you wanted to try a new career, what's the worst that can happen? You can go back to what's familiar. If you move country, lean into it. What's the worst that can happen? Your home is, or your, your traditional homestead will always be there for you. We have to, you know, after the last number of years that we've all been through, we have to see that there's so much happening out there that having courage is a great mm -hmm. skill and a trait. And if you trust yourself and back yourself, things will work out. And the only reason I say you, if you trust yourself and back yourself at some stage, as you're on your journey, you realize you need support from people who've been there before, have done it before. So then you ask out for help and support. We didn't ask for a lot of help and support. We try and le leaned on each other. And uh, looking back now, it would be absolutely to get second opinions, third opinions. Hey, feeling a little bit homesick in our relation to her, change from moving country. And then lean into it and just enjoy it, embrace it, have fun. And I say, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. It will pass. And then you'll be in a new comfort zone and you'll be looking for your next adventure. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. So, Andrew, what was your intention behind your intention behind writing the book? Yeah, I had three intentions. Number one was to continue the commitment I made to myself to have no regrets. And it's something I wanted to do. I loved writing at, uh, in high school back in Ireland. And I just felt there was a great story. So I wanted to do it. My wife pushed me because it's not easy to sit down and write a book. So it took the best part of two years. Uh, but I got there and it's published. So I've done that. No regrets later in life. The second intention was to give a copy to my son, Alfie, who's three and a half. Uh, I'm 45. So I kind of do think at li life, look at life a little bit differently based on that experience. And I kind of want him to know uh, about our life growing up in Ireland. Um, the tough times that we've been through, I hope he gets inspiration from reading about his dad and his mom and how we overcame challenges in our life. And I guess how he grew up in America. And then the third intention really is for readers uh, who manage to um, read the book, uh, that they may be inspired or motivated to just push themselves and change their circumstances, even perhaps reconcile the past, but to really live a life and embrace things that they want to do. You know, resilience is the core theme of the book. It really is the power to keep going and overcome, survive and thrive. And since the book is launched, the people are reaching out. First of all, to hold your own book is a, an incredible feeling. I, I just can't believe it. You know, it's, um, <laughs> thank you, Maureen. And secondly, to have someone to say they bought it is a funny feeling, you know, that they'd invest their money, their hard earned money, because there's a lot of things that we can be spending money on in, in the times we're in with the economy and the cost of living. And then to say they loved it, got something out of it. And I'm so proud. And I'm having so many authentic conversations with my friends on different levels, male, females reaching out to me. You know, the, a, a big section in the book is, uh, unfortunately, Jane and I suffered four miscarriages before Alfie came along. So that was a really tough time, four miscarriages, four years. You know, a lot of questions as to why this is happening to us, so on and so forth. So that, they were the three main intentions, and I'm kind of ticking the box and all those. Um, and I'm just so humble, grateful, and very proud of myself as well. Oh, absolutely. Kudos, Andrew. And where, and where does this get people to, where, what, where do people go with this? So the piece I want to really lean on is that the piece of resilience, the piece of, of how we face change mm -hmm. in a world that overnight, but in the next minute, things are changing so rapidly, technology and, and, and just so much in this world, right? It's, it's, so change is now on the menu. And mm -hmm. that being said, yours was intentionally being able to embrace change. And with people that are like, okay, well, I, I really didn't choose this, but we all know that it's still, we do choose it because we're hundred percent responsible for our life. Okay, but that being said, what, what would you say to people say, all right, you're facing change and change that you may not have wanted. This is still how, this is what I would say to you to bring you forward to, to just be able to move yourself, your circumstances, your family, 
and, and to make yourself out to the other side and, and, and a better life. What, is, what does that look like? What would you say? I think it comes down to mindset. As soon as something happens to you that's completely outside of your control, which is life, and that's inevitable, it's going to keep happening. The first port of call is, right, it's happened. It genuinely is in the past. You know, it happened one or two seconds ago. How am I going to respond to this? And that's where you have a choice. And that's how you then get in control. Things can happen, of course, the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job. There are times when you have to sort of grieve and you should sit with the pain or the, or the feelings that you have and go through that and understand and check in with yourself and say, hey, you know what? This is getting me down or, you know, this is kind of a blessing in disguise. I did really want to go and pursue a different career. Um, I've worked in a lot of big corporate companies where there's a lot of organizational change. And just when you think everything's going smoothly, for some reason, things get changed and there's a restructure or we think we can do something different. But I always found that if you lean into it, as we've said, but seek out as much information about that situation you find yourself in, understand it, uh, embrace it, and then you can conquer it. Um, and again, you know, if, if, if you do that, seek out support for people too and say, hey, you know, let's be open. I think American culture is very open. I love that about America. Ireland is open too, but it kind of takes a little bit longer. You get to know people. So you lean on family first and then friends second. But I found Americans really refreshing that you can almost tell people anything if you're confident enough to go and do it. And you'll find people that have been through things and um, worse or similar, and there's comfort in that. Um, but as soon as something happens, if you can get in the mindset of, right, okay, let me just assess what's happened here. Okay, how does that affect me? How does it affect my family? What can I do about this? Because you get great satisfaction if you take control, right? That's happened. I think I'm going to, you know, sit down for the day and digest the information. And then tomorrow, I'm going to start with a new frame of mind. Everything can be overcome, you know, even if it's on your own or getting support or reaching out to people. We live in a technological world where we can find answers to things. We can find inspiration from other people. My book can do that. Other people's books can do that. It's not a hero's journey, though. That's the thing about my book, you know, traveling the road to resilience. It's not that I'm sitting here talking to Maureen and, and I forget about all those tough times when I cried, when I was probably depressed and I had to go to therapy and, and talk things through because I felt that was the right forum for me rather than talking to my friends or my parents. And, um, you know, four miscarriages, four losses, uh, my wife's mental health. We leaned on each other incredibly. We grieved together we all had different stages in grief i remember one friday night we just both broke down after dinner and embraced hugged cried let it all out and stayed hopeful that alfie would come along um but anybody watching or listening you know you have the power within you it's just a matter of you taking your time with it accepting it and then moving forward with courage i want to put a little nuance to what you said you are a hero. You yeah. are standing with courage and you are continually bringing others forward. So I'm putting a little edit on that. <laughs> uh, and Andrew, how can people work with you? How could they get in touch with you? What does it look like? And what are you doing now? Sure. Yeah. So, well, the book, first of all, How Did I Get Here? Traveling the Road to Resilience lives on Amazon and it will live forever as long as Amazon is open and available for business. So it's available in ebook and paperback worldwide. My website, which is the easiest place to go and find information and, and sign up for updates and some offers that will be coming out soon is andrewfitzgeraldauthor.com. Uh, reach out to me that way. I, reach, I, I love reaching back out to people. I think it's great. People taking time. You know, we sign up for so many things and then we unsu unsubscribe, but I'll be very meaningful and, and uh, quality communication, meaningful communication. And what I'm doing right now is I'm taking a little bit of a sabbatical from what I call my corporate career to promote and market my book, but more importantly, to promote and market the message of resilience. And I am available to work with people one-on-one -on -one in terms of resilience. I do offer a free 30-minute coaching call where I listen to anybody, understand where they're at, and see how I can help them go forward because it can be something simple or it can be something that may not be the right forum for me to help with, but I can certainly point people in the right direction. All right. Um, I, I love your vulnerability and, and just your courage. Thank you, Maureen. How did I get here? Andrew Fitzgerald, the website link, as well as um, all his social media links are here. It's a fun book. It's an adventurous book. It's a 
It's a, a very quick read. Get the book. How how did I get here? Andrew, thank you for coming on today. Maureen, thank you so much. And thanks to everybody for watching and listening.